This is Don at HowToAirBrush.com. Today, in this little lesson, I want to go over air pressure. I'm asked all the time, what air pressure? What air pressure? It really depends on the type of airbrush you're using in the paint. First of all, let's go over getting your compressor set up correctly. You have your compressor, you have a regulator, you have a moisture trap, you have at least 10 feet of ho air hose, which goes to another regulator, another moisture trap, another hose, a manifold if you're using more than one airbrush, and out of the manifold to your airbrush. In my shop, for instance, the compressor is 50 gallons. It sits outside as a regulator, moisture trap, and then uh, the hose runs through the shop to my paint station, where I have another regulator bolted onto the paint station with a moisture trap that runs to my manifold. You want this length of hose in here so that when the warm air comes out of the compressor there's plenty of room for the air and the moisture to separate and then it'll the moisture will collect in this last moisture trap before it gets to your airbrush. If you have a little tiny compressor in the house this is still the best way to set it up. Unless it's a little tiny Sparmax or studio compressor, diaphragm type compressor. In that case you should be running a house fan on your compressor to help it run as cool as possible. But this still really is the best setup. So what you have is your compressor, a regulator, a moisture trap, your hose, a regulator, the last moisture trap, manifold into your airbrush. If you're using more than one airbrush, the manifold is simply a hollowed out block of metal that allows you to connect all your airbrushes at one time. And then generally you can turn them on and off from the manifold. So it would come in, air comes in from your compressor into the manifold. If you're only using one airbrush, you don't need to worry about that. You can just go right from the last moisture trap to your airbrush. As far as what pressure you need to be running, it really depends on what kind of airbrush you're using and what paint you're using. Uh, gravity feed, like a lot of BCS, and textile paint, like Badger Spectrotex, straight out of the bottle for doing t-shirts, you're going to need to be between 40 and 60 pounds of pressure probably. Whereas if you were using a gravity feed airbrush and an illustration type paint like Golden Airbrush Colors or Createx Illustration, Comart, Dr. Martens, the pressure could it be anywhere from 8 to 20 pounds of pressure and you're still going to get good paint atomization. So it really depends on the combination of airbrush and the paint you're using. There really is no fixed answer to that. I mean, it's something you have to experiment with and find out where you're most comfortable, where you get the best paint atomization without clouding your room up full of overspray. So the less pressure you can run, the best atomization is where you want to be. And when you set your airbrush pressure, it's called working PSI. In other words, if you just go to your compressor or your last regulator in the setup and set it at 40 pounds, well, when you go to airbrush, you're going to notice that it probably goes down to like 30 pounds. So you're not airbrushing with 40 pounds of pressure, you're airbrushing with 30. So when you set your air pressure at your last regulator, you want to depress the trigger of your airbrush, and then set the pressure. That's your working airbrush pressure. As far as regulating the pressure, you do it at the regulators. You don't do it with your finger on the trigger. I know some artists like to do that, but what's going to eventually happen is if you keep doing this, you're going to end up with a big glob of paint on an illustration you're doing. It's not a safe thing to be doing. Again, once you start airbrushing, your air is always depressed, your fingers just going back and forth. So don't try and regulate the air pressure 
with your finger on the trigger. It just, it doesn't work out. Some airbrushes have what's called a little map valve in the front, which will regulate the air pressure. Personally, I don't really like them, but I know a lot of artists like them a lot. I mean, if you need to really crank the air pressure down, and you don't, I mean, that's one way of doing it. It's just as easy to reach over if you have your compressor set up this way with your regulator moisture trap within an arm's length is just to adjust it here. To me, that makes more sense. But again, the MAC valve, a lot of people like it. As far as paint goes, again, the, the best pressure is one that works best for you. There is no real standard answer. T-shirt paint, like Wicked Colors, Createx, Badger. Um, if you're spraying t-shirts, you want to keep the paint pretty much the way it comes out of the bottle. So between 40 and 60 pounds of pressure. Illustration paint, House of Color. Again, depending on the airbrush, with a gravity feed airbrush, anywhere from 8 to 20 pounds of pressure. And how do you determine that? just by experimenting. Right now we're at about 30 pounds of pressure. This is golden airbrush color. If I went and turned it way down, to say five, see how grainy the paint looks? I mean, that's great if you're doing granite or a stippling effect, but that's not what you want uh, for a finished product. You want the paint to atomize better. So we're going to crank the pressure up to 30. See how much finer a mist the paint is? It's not as granular. It's atomizing a lot better. And this is really what you have to go through there with your airbrush and your particular paint. It's the best solution is to just play around with it until you get a comfortable spot where it works best for you. The lower the pressure you can run, the better off you're going to be. It creates less overspray and that overspray you're eventually going to have to clean up because it's going to get all over your shop, studio, wherever you happen to be airbrushing. It's uh, not good for your health either. So you want to set your air pressure where it atomizes the paint real good, yet doesn't create a ton of overspray. As far as paint reduction goes in atomizing paint, every paint comes with a tech sheet that'll tell you what is best used to reduce the paint. Trident water-based paint comes with its own reducer, which works real well. Auto air comes with its own reducer. Wicked Colors comes with its own reducer. Buy the, the specific reducer for the brand paint you're using. Don't be using some homemade brew. Uh, you're just going to get yourself in trouble. Reduce it with what the manufacturer recommends. Post the color, you use their reducer. Unless you buy it in a pre-reduced state, like custom coat, like custom shop paint comes. Custom shop paint comes pre-reduced. All you do is put it in your airbrush and go. You might still want to reduce it. I do occasionally. So every paint has its own particular product they want you to reduce it. It should, generally speaking, unless you're doing t-shirts, it should flow about like milk. So if you go to the refrigerator right now and pour yourself a little glass of milk and watch how it flows, that's how your paint should flow. So the key points we want to go over here, again, is number one, setting your compressor up correctly so you don't have a bunch of air blowing through your airbrush into your paint or a bunch of water blowing through your 
uh, airbrush on your painting. So we want to keep the air dry. The best solution to keeping the air dry is set your compressor up like this. The second point we want to go over is that you don't adjust the air pressure at the trigger of the airbrush. You do that at the regulator. The third point is when you set your airbrush working pressure, you want to set it at the regulator with your finger depressed on the trigger so that you have a working airbrush pressure. And the last point really is paint reduction and finding where it, at what PSI and what reduction you're going to get the best atomization without creating a ton of overspray. So it's going to take a little experimenting on your part, but once you find that sweet spot, you'll never have to do it again. So it's worth taking 10 or 15 minutes, if you're new to airbrushing, just to play around with this, all this, and find out what pressure works best for you. I hope that explains air pressure a little bit, or a little bit clearer. I get asked that question all the time, and as far as setting up your compressor. This is Don at How To Airbrush. I hope you found this helpful. It's just paint. Have fun. Relax.